You've received the signed contract from your client and now it's time to celebrate. Celebrate, yes, but disappear, no. And a lot of sales managers do tend to disappear after the contract is signed. So we're gonna talk about ways to stay in touch with your clients after the contract is signed so you can nurture that relationship, which could potentially lead to repeat business or referrals to your property. Stick around. It's Leanne from LeanneCalderwood.com and when you finally do get a signed contract for a program, it is reason to celebrate. You've been working for months, maybe even sometimes years on landing this program and it is time to celebrate. But remember when the celebrating is over, the client still wants to hear from you and in fact, this is a great opportunity to stay in touch with your client because there could be some repeat be business behind that relationship building building or even referrals behind that meeting planner client after they've had such a good experience with you before the contract was signed and after. So we're going to talk about some tips on how to stay in touch with your client. Tip number one, send a thank you card. It's so easy to do, but often forgotten. And I've even done a video and a blog post about creative ways of recognizing your clients that you can find up here. But sending a simple handwritten note is so effective in nurturing that relationship. Tip number two, introduce your client to their CSM. It's often that the meeting planner is ready to tackle the logistics before the CSM is. So if you bridge that gap, then your planner isn't left wondering who they need to talk to at the hotel. And if a CSM hasn't been assigned yet, then make it clear to the client that if they need anything in the meantime, that they can reach out to you. Tip number three, send them your logos, your social media handles, and anything else that the meeting planner may use in their marketing materials. Again, you want to attract their delegation to your hotel now that you have a room block set aside for them. So make it easy for them to learn about you, to fall in love with you, and to book your property when they're going to go to the meeting. Tip number four, send them value-based content throughout the planning cycle. And these pieces of content, they can relate to your property. So for example, how green meetings plays out in your property or how AV setups can play out in your ballroom, but they can also be helpful meeting planning pieces outside of your property. They're going to then see you as a resident expert. And again, that's going to lead to a, a greater relationship and potentially more repeat business. And if you need more tips on how to do a successful inbound marketing campaign, I've started to touch on inbound marketing for hotel sales managers here. I invite you to check that out. Tip number five, check in on their room block. And again, by doing this, you're helping that meeting planner monitor their potential attrition if they're falling short, but also to pick up more rooms if they're really overperforming. It is so frustrating when a meeting planner is scrambling for rooms because they've underestimated how many people are going to come to their conference and now they're in a sellout situation. But if you were able to help out with monitoring that in, in the front end, then maybe we can add rooms to the block, get more of the delegation all under one roof. And that really lends itself to the meeting planner's goals and objectives and of course increases your revenue as well. Tip number six, go and see them when they arrive on program. And perhaps you're doing this one already. It is a simple one, but if you're not, just take a few moments to go downstairs and say hi to the meeting planner when they arrive. And if you're not able to be there in person because of other commitments, send even someone on your behalf to say, hey, I'm here on behalf of so-and-so. They couldn't make it, but they really wanted to say hi. Tip number seven, provide them with uh, in-room amenity. Again, an easy one, and this is one of the more common ones, but I wanted to make sure it appeared on the list just in case this is something that you may not be capturing in your client care program. Providing them with a quick bite to eat, especially when they arrive after a long travel day, is so welcome and appreciated. 
And finally, check in with them after the program is over. You want to get that feedback. And if things went off the rails in some areas, you want the opportunity to fix it internally. But more importantly, what if nothing went wrong and it was a fantastic program? This is the prime time to get a testimonial when they are raving about your property. That's when they have the most energy and the most recollection of all the things that were awesome about your space. Capture that on paper. That's something you can use to find more business. So make sure that you have that testimonial on hand. Is there anything that I was missing on this list? What are some things that you have done to cultivate and grow the relationship with a client after the program is signed? And if you haven't already done so, take a few minutes this quarter to craft out a client care strategy. So the next time you get a signed contract, you've got all the the steps already outlined on how you're going to treat that client all the way through to when their meeting has finished. Now that you have some ideas on how to stay connected with your clients after the contract is signed, it's my hope that you experience richer and deeper relationships with all of your clients. If you like this video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you haven't downloaded my tip sheet on how to attract a meeting planner's attention, jump on over to leannecalderwood.com. You can download it right from the homepage. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.